real quick, I just want to say, if you haven't already, go ahead and download the Stardust app, right? And once you do that, you can go ahead and make like a like a 30 second or below uh, reaction video or review on a movie or a show that you just watched. And when you do that, make sure to tag me, Gator, right? And you can possibly be in a future movie or show review. Thank you. As some of y'all may know, I am still getting over my sickness, so I'm trying to be very cautious about what I put into my body. Um, I do not want to throw it back up. So as of right now, I'm I'm sucking on a. What uh? What you uh? What you sucking on? Yeah, what you sucking on, Gator? Relax, relax. It's a oh, cough drop. Okay. That better be the only I'm not. Thing you suck nah, on. nah. Please don't take it out of context. Wow. It's a cough drop. I'm sucking on a cough drop. Just saying. But kettle corn, popcorn, uh, movie theater popcorn, ultimate butter popcorn, all them popcorns are with me in spirit. So without further ado, let's get right into it. See, I want, I want, I wanted to go to Six Flags too, I guess we, but I don't know about this. Two of my closest friends, Trevor and Kevin, always love to go on late night adventures. I have so many fond memories going on creepy midnight exploration sessions with them, but I have some not so great ones as well. However, the worst experience was the night we went to Joyland Amusement Park in Kansas, an abandoned park surrounded by a somewhat typical suburban area. We lived only 10 minutes away from the park, so we figured it would be our next late night destination. We always brought our Phoenix flashlights, backpacks, and boots whenever we went to places like this. And Adidas. And Adidas. You know. I'm... <sighs> Bought your flashlight, you bought your phone, you bought, you bought, you brought, you know, your Glock. But none of that means nothing if you didn't bring your Adidas. That's all I'm saying, though. That's all, hey, let me, let me relax, because I'm still sick, but let me, I'm just saying. Don't, don't, hey, don't, don't do it to me. Don't do it to me, because I'm, hey, just because I'm a little sick, don't mean I'm not going to spaz out on you. Just saying. You should have bought your Adidas. Today, mostly everything in Joyland Amusement Park has been torn down, but this was back in like 2011 or 2012, and at that time, most of the buildings and rides were still standing. We pulled up on a side road next to the parking lot since it seemed a lot less sketchy than pulling up into the parking lot itself. Then we figured we should just pull up onto the grass next to the woods by the park, because God forbid if a cop would drive down the road. Kevin led the way while Trevor and I followed behind, talking to each other, sometimes joking about how much more eager Kevin was to move ahead than we were. We kept our voices low, however, because we never knew if there might still be security in places like this. All the carnival shacks that once held concessions and games had now been ransacked, trashed with cans and bottles, and sprayed with graffiti. It was basically the scene that you would expect to see in an amusement park that had been abandoned for years. Even though the park was surrounded by suburbs, it was kind of encased in by woods in almost all directions. Whoa. So instead of late night traffic, all we heard were crickets and other night creatures. It added to the experience because to be honest, all three of us in a certain way liked being freaked out. We walked into another carnival game stand. This one with the paintings at top still not completely worn away or graffitied over. It had some smiling cartoon character holding a dart gun, so I'm guessing it was some kind of target hitting game. Now it was just rubble and litter on the ground. Suddenly there was the sound of a glass bottle breaking not too far away. Oh, when shit. we turned in that direction it became clear it definitely came from the bigger looking building. Perplexed and kind of shaken, the three of us went in that direction. Wow, are you... Oh, there it is. There it is. Instead of running, you checked it out. For real? That's what we doing. That's what we doing right now. Okay. So 
Sorry. That's what we doing. Like, for real? Instead of running something that scared you, you're going to check it out, figure out what it was, and now you're about to get clocked up. We stopped probably two-thirds of the way there when we saw someone standing in the corner of what was once called the Wacky Shack attraction. The person was legitimately just standing facing the corner wall of the entrance. I whispered at my friends to back away slowly. Okay. There was clearly something wrong with this person, and we didn't want them to hear us. We backed away, trying to avoid making any noise. Keep your eyes on them. It was almost like something out of a cliche horror movie when either Kevin or Trevor stepped on a beer can, which made a really loud crunch. Why did that? Why did the that? The person scare? standing in the corner turned their head and looked at us, but the speed in which they turned their head was what really scared me. It was almost like a deer. Oh, man. We can now see it was a man. He had a deranged look on his face. The three of us simply walked quickly away. We didn't run because that would only be more cause for this person to chase us. Bush. We made it to the woods where we would cut through to get to the car. Halfway there, Kevin looks back and mutters, Oh shit. We look back and see the guy just standing stiff next to a tree in the distance, a few meters away. Running seemed like our only sensible option at this point. It didn't take long before we were at the car. We screamed at Kevin to unlock it as he fumbled for his keys. As we got into the car and looked out the windows, we could all see him again. This time once again standing stiff like a statue, hunched over by the tree line to the woods. Kevin drove off, and Trevor and I screamed out taunts to the man. That didn't mean we weren't still absolutely shaken permanently. It's scary to think that none of us ever actually saw that weird man move. He seemed to always be standing still whenever we saw him. That's why you don't be going on no late night, late night adventures. I don't care what the circumstances are. I was taking my family on a road trip to South Florida. It was a long two day drive and I could tell my kids were getting restless. I saw a sign for an amusement park zoom by on the parkway. So I figured I'd treat my kids and take them to an amusement park for a couple hours. It was late already anyway, so we were just gonna stop at the hotel soon. I figured I might as well. My wife and I followed our two kids, Tommy, seven, and Trish, five. They ran ahead of us to find a ride they wanted to go on. I had to admit, this was one pathetic looking amusement park. There weren't many other people there. There weren't many attractions either, more than half of what appeared to once be attractions and games were now just empty stands and buildings. As long as the kids were happy though, that's all that really mattered. Tommy was running so far ahead, pointing at one of the rides ahead in the dark. I thought for sure he was pointing to the Ferris wheel, but when he made an unexpected turn left and out of sight, my wife and I screamed for him to come back here immediately. When he didn't come back, I told my wife to wait there with Trish while I ran as fast as I could to chase after Tommy. I couldn't find him anywhere though. My heart began to race. The feeling of losing your small child is a painfully scary feeling that will literally make you feel sick inside. I stood in place looking around in a full 360 motion, breathing heavily, afraid someone might have taken my son. I ran to the nearest worker I could find and gave them my son's description. They called on a loudspeaker for Tommy to come to the front entrance. In the meantime, I still ran all over the place searching for him. Tommy clocking up. Tommy, man. See, if I had some children and we went something, something like that. If, if, man, if I was, if, if, if I was in that scenario, you best believe not only would I have Adidas, not only would my girlfriend or wife at the time would have Adidas, but my children would have Adidas too. Right? And Tommy, man, nobody would catch him. You know why? Because he's already wearing Adidas. Right? Nobody would catch him. He'd be juking, you know? He'd be breaking people's ankles. He'd be he making people slide, you know? But I don't think he's wearing Adidas in this story, though. Poor guy. Never even had a chance. 
I stopped dead in my tracks, and I felt my heart drop when I found him. He was over by a wall of bushes next to a bathroom building. Oh, shit. He was talking to someone who was apparently in the bushes. Then it looked like he was pulled into the bushes. I screamed Tommy's name as I took a break for the bushes. There was nobody around to serve as a witness or come and help me. I got to the bushes and heard Tommy talking to someone. I didn't hear the other person's voice, though. I pushed my way through the bushes and saw Tommy being pulled. I didn't see by who, though. I ran to him and pulled him, but I felt something else on the other side of another layer of bushes pulling him in that direction. But quickly, whatever it was let go, and I pulled Tommy into my arms. I told him to wait there as I pushed my way through more bushes to a small opening surrounded by trees. There was no one in sight. I had no idea how whoever it was could have gotten away that quickly. I still don't. When I got back to my son, I took him back in public eye of the park and put my hands on his shoulders, shaking him as I was asking him who he was walking with. He said he was following some guy named George. He said George was a lot older than him. I took him back to the front entrance of the amusement park and had him describe George to the workers. They said they'd keep a sharp lookout for him and we promptly left the park. We went straight to a hotel and the rest of our trip from there was normal except for the fact that I couldn't get the incident out of my head. The guy that was on the other, the other side of the I bushes. I used to work at a little theme park called Thrillville, USA. I was, going, I was about to say, the guy that was on the other side of the bushes probably had Adidas. That's why he got away so fast. Just saying, Adidas be getting you places in time. No, not the video game. There was an actual amusement park called Thrillville. It was very tiny and secluded though, so don't picture a big place like Six Flags or something in your head. I never enjoyed working there because my shift would always be something different every day, and there was an insane amount of weirdos there. But that's irrelevant. <coughs> the park closed in 2007, and ever since, I've been from job to job in this shitty country-ass town. One cloudy evening on my own in 2009, I decided it would be fun to go check out what's become of Thrillville, since it had been shut down and abandoned for two years at the time. I pulled up to the parking lot, which was of course empty. The grass surrounding the park was now overgrown, and the overgrown grass waved around in the breeze, suggesting an incoming storm. Sneaking in was easy, considering it wasn't fenced off or anything, but it was clear some things had already been torn down. Still, at the time, mostly everything was still standing, but it had become so much creepier now. I began to feel tiny rain droplets, but I didn't really care. I was dressed for rain anyway. Well, okay, but were you? But, but but are you dressed to haul ass though? Huh? Are you? Because it doesn't seem like it. And please tell me you're not there alone. That you didn't just go to the amusement park, the dead amusement park, by yourself. Please tell me you just didn't do that. Because not only do you not probably don't have your Adidas on, you, you're there by yourself, like. I got a toast to that. Hey, oh man. Oh! Oh. Ugh. Sorry. The park was creepy, but the first really disturbing thing didn't actually happen until I heard something scutter behind me. To be honest, I couldn't tell if it was a person or an animal. Don't worry about that. But something was definitely there. Just run. I didn't see anything, though, so I just pressed onward, choosing to ignore it. I was snapping constant pictures with my Canon camera that I took along because for a few months I was kind of into photography. You know, a passing interest. I snapped away at different buildings, the defunct roller coaster, the big old yellow slide that was now covered in mud stains. Then there were the buildings like the bathrooms, the main office, the varying maintenance shacks. I decided I would start with the bathrooms. I don't know why I thought that would be interesting, but I did. I stepped into the men's side of the bathrooms, which was obviously pitch black inside. Oh, hell The lights no. no longer worked, so I had to turn on the flash on my camera. 
kind of like that scene from the first Saw movie. I took a picture of the sink and mirror and checked the image quality. The light flash on my camera was very bright, so pictures in the dark always came out clear. Then I heard the slightest little ting sound. It came from the side of the bathroom with the stalls. I called out, is someone in here? There were two stalls from what I remember. I went over to the first stall and pushed the stall door open slowly. I aimed my camera into the stall and took the picture. Oh my god! The light revealed nothing but a toilet in the stall. I moved on to the next stall and pushed the door open. With this one, I was having trouble drawing up the nerve to take the picture. I took about- Stop! 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 Stop playing! Stop! I can see where this is going now. Oh my god! Oh my god, he gonna snap, 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 and something gonna be right there. Watch, something gonna be on the snap. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh, I'm not ready. Oh my god, I'm not ready. Like, uh, physically, I'm not ready. Like, I'm still sick, so I may... Oh my god, come on. Five seconds before I pressed the button, and the camera light flashed. And in that brief moment of light, I saw a tall figure looming down at me. <coughs> I shut the stall door and screamed as I ran back outside to the light and to my car. When I got to my car, I checked the picture I captured in that stall. In the picture was a figure, probably six foot three, standing in front of the toilet, but for some reason the face was blurry. I couldn't see any distinguishing features, but it seemed to be a man. As I browsed through some of the other photos, I picked up on something disturbing. In four photos out of ten, I found what appeared to be a person hiding somewhere in the distance, but always seemed to be staring at me. In two pictures, the person was in the woods. In two others, they were behind buildings or rides. I never sent those pictures from my camera onto my computer, but I think they're still on the camera. I just haven't seen it in years. It might be in my attic. If I find it, I'll post them online. But I quite frankly never want to see that picture again. <coughs> y'all, uh, a lot of you all was uh, telling me that this was a good video. It was a good video. God damn. Um. But yeah, like once I get back to my regular self, I'm gonna be uh, like. Uh, like once I'm not sick anymore, then you know I, I'm gonna go back to like my regular uh, how I act on camera. But right now it's like I can't really do that much because I'm still sick. But um, first of all, going into a a dead amusement park that's been closed for God knows how long that's already a red flag. But going there by yourself. At all hours of the night. That 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 just adds <coughs> sorry. But that 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 just adds like red flags and red flags and red flags. Like you just don't do that. Like that's come on man. And if 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 I mean I love amusement parks, right? And personally, my favorite, my favorite would have to be, I want to say Six Flags, but then again, I haven't really, uh, uh, you know, went to uh, every amusement park. But uh, I love Six Flags. Six Flags is nice, you know. But I'm not, I'm not the type of person to. To go, especially, I'm not the type of person to go to Six Flags or an amusement park of that, of that, of that, of that size without no Adidas. Nah, no, nah, you tripping. But, um, yeah, yeah, this was a, this was a really good video, Mr. Nightmare. Uh, but if you all, What's your, if you have a favorite amusement park, let me know that in the comment section below. You know, Hershey Park, uh, Disney World, Disneyland. Uh, don't, I already know how I feel about those two. Uh, Hershey, Hershey Kiss? Hershey Kiss? 
Hershey Park. There we go. And Six Flags, Kings of Men, uh, Wally World. I don't even know that. I just I just said that. I don't even know. I don't even think that's a, a thing. I don't know why I said that, but uh, yeah. But uh, yeah. And if you have you if you have like a family or kids or whatever, and you go to amusement park, make sure everybody has Adidas or something close to it, because. <coughs> Because chances are something is gonna pop off, so I just, I'm just, you know, I just want y'all to be on high alert, put your guard up, cautious. Um, yeah, so I'm sorry I wasn't like I'm. I'm sorry I'm not myself. Like I said, I'm still sick. Well, getting over my sickness, I feel a lot better than I was than I did. Oh my God, that was bad. But yeah, once I'm not sick anymore or whatever, well, I don't feel like I am. And I'm gonna get back to my popcorn. I'm gonna get back to my regular routine. But right now, I'm just trying to be cautious about what, like I said, what I put in my body. So uh, yeah. Hey, keep it cool, keep it classy, and I love you. Stay happy, my family.